Well, this is one of the segments that we haven't gone ahead, obviously, attacked to the fullest, but every game that Arsenal is going to be playing, I tell you, I'll be bringing you five things we learned from that game and the results that Arsenal went ahead, obviously, collects. And this time around, it's a game that ended 3-1 in favor of Arsenal. Arsenal 3, Southampton 1, uh, Kai Havertz on target, uh, Martinelli on target, and Bukayo Saka on target and two assists coming in from Bokayo Saka and he sort of ate that in the player ratings I went ahead obviously gift him to be my man of the match because I believe he really deserved it and no one really came close to a player known as to a player known as Bokayo Saka into that ilk so welcome to this channel it's a sunday hope you guys are really having fun and we're here to address the issues of this beautiful game of football that Astor went ahead to play at the Emirates now Remember, we are powered by Mono Gadgets, dealers in brand new phones and brand new laptops. Even if you need a used phone and a used laptop, not from Africa, but from the United Kingdom, go ahead and obviously call them on plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five, and you'll thank me later in here onto this channel. So I'm really intrigued with what is really taking place all over the world, and I'm like, oh my god, things are really moving into the right ilk altogether. So that is Mono Gadgets for you. Go to TikTok, search for them there. They'll get you the best of the best that you really want. Now, where should we start from? Five things that we learned from the game of Arsenal versus the side of Southampton. I've gonna hit write them down here and let me start with the first one. Now, <clears throat> Arsenal has now been behind twice in the Premier League season. You get and they've gone ahead to come back and they haven't gone ahead to lose any of those games that they've gone ahead to come back remember those two games that arsenal has found themselves behind are arsenal versus man city that ended 2-2 and arsenal versus um southampton that ended 3-1 in favor of the side of arsenal and i don't want obviously go deep into what happened in the game of city because very many arsenal fans were pissed of the red card fronted to leandro trossard and so on and so forth so we cannot come up and obviously really go deep back into that because I have my own reservations. You two have your own reservations. I have my own opinions. You two are really stuck to your own opinions. So I know that the game of football is really a game that really has opinions, all different opinions. And all you have to do is respect each other and not really try to insult one another. But to obviously admit that we can't all have the same thought about something. But this was the second game in the Premier League that Arsenal fell behind by one goal and they went ahead to obviously come back and won all and really went ahead to win it their first game they went ahead to obviously come back they leveled through uh Cara Fiori, that was the game against man city and then who gave them the lead it was gabriel magales and you know to it that Arsenal had gone ahead to put in a very beautiful shift not until Leandro Trossard went ahead to get a red card but it was 2-1 until the 98th minute of the game where Arsenal went ahead to obviously concede a goal from John Stones. You understand? So that was it and that was the first game but it showed you that when they came back they came back and responded with two goals and they were ahead of Man City. Even yesterday they did the same they came back and they really won this beautiful game of football against Southampton. It was really one of those points I really noted that it is the second game this season that Arsenal has gone ahead, obviously, fall back and they found themselves really going to obviously go ahead and really win it. And by the way, it's the first game for Arsenal to win this season when they've gone ahead to go one goal down. You know that very well. You know, <clears throat> they first played against. Wolverhampton Wanderers to nil. They played, um, I think they played, was it against Brighton? Arsenal played against Brighton. They drew 1 1. It was a red card for a player known as um, Declan Rice. Then Arsenal went ahead to beat Aston Villa to nil. They beat Spurs by one goal to nil. They drew with City and they beat Leicester by four goals to two. You get for the game of Leicester City, Arsenal was never, 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 never in the losing position, right? In that game of football, uh, they came up, and when they came up, they obviously had to put in the best shift altogether. Arsenal was two up and it got leveled. You understand? So 
that's where the difference comes in through so that is the first thing we learned from this game <coughs> arsenal for the second time in a row sorry for the second time this season went ahead obviously fall went ahead obviously fall one back so one behind and they came back and obviously won the game of football and they responded positively like they did against city now <coughs> secondly we have to talk about um arsenal have gone ahead to play three games in a row without keeping a clean sheet you understand when the season started <coughs> arsenal kept a clean sheet against wolverhampton wanderers arsenal kept a clean sheet against aston villa you get and they drew 1-1 one -one with brighton they kept a clean sheet against tottenham hotspur you understand but now they've gone ahead to obviously play man city 2-2 two -two. they conceded two goals they went ahead to play leicester city they conceded two goals and they went ahead obviously play southampton they conceded one meaning that in the previous three premier league games arsenal hasn't gone ahead to keep a clean sheet and they've gone ahead to concede five goals though they've gone ahead to score nine and i tell you what <clears throat> it doesn't sound good for a team that is really so much known for keeping clean sheets i tell you that is it for a team that keeps clean sheets it's not good news for them because arsenal is known for not really letting in goals to obviously cross the line especially when they are 11 and there are only two goals that arsenal is going to hit to concede when they are 10 men against brighton against man city but the first goal of man city comes in through all came in through when arsenal are still having 11 players on the field of play so ateta has to find a solution to this because <clears throat> if arsenal continues to do this it won't really be something nice to everyone who is watching it through because they will need to obviously try to keep clean sheets this is something that Alex Ferguson used to say that <clears throat> clean sheets win trophies and goals win matches because if you keep a clean sheet even one goal can win you you get he said goals not goal meaning that when he said clean sheets win trophies he meant that clean sheets are really the most important bit of it all because you can score a goal and he added that goals win matches you get but if i told you keep a clean sheet and score one goal you obviously walk away with three points into your pocket and get back home bragging you get and you remember very well i think it was which season where Chelsea went ahead obviously got 10 plus games without conceding a goal and the premier league went ahead obviously put in money put out money for a player to score against chelsea first you understand so it shows you the power of keeping clean sheets and when you continue keeping clean sheets there is no way you are not part of the teams that are really going to be competing for the trophy so arsenal it's three games in a row when arsenal is not keeping clean sheets and that is something worrying right but when they return from the international break they are going to be hosting um bournemouth they're going to be playing at bournemouth then they play um liverpool at emirates and they'll play away at newcastle that is on the second and they'll have to play chelsea 10th november you understand so they'll have to obviously they're going to be playing four games on the 19th of october 27th of october 2nd november and 10th november and i think it's going to be the very first time you're going to be playing four games in a row before you go to the national break ever since the season started we've been playing i think have we played for even this time round? but those are the next four games that arsenal are really going to be playing but against bournemouth they can keep a clean sheet against liverpool there is a very huge question mark where they can keep a clean sheet at emirates against liverpool against newcastle i think they can against chelsea huge question marks right that is what we are talking about into the into the league right that is the second thing we've gonna hit obviously notice thirdly tommy Yasu return Tomiyasu has been injured and he has gone ahead to return on time or the right moment. You know, when you're really dying to really eat something and obviously someone says, I want to provide you with this, yet it's exactly the same thing that you're really yearning to obviously eat. You understand? So that is exactly what the side of Arsenal has gone to experience with the return of Tomiyasu Takahiro because two of their right backs have been injured. Uh, Julian Timber and ben white those two have been injured meaning that 
they play Thomas Partey out of position and you don't trust him at the right back because they can easily beat him just because Southampton never had a very good left forward that would obviously bring that ball to Thomas Partey and obviously see to it that he really causes trouble but you wouldn't like to play your best CDM at the club and you play him as a and you play him as a right back you get you would like to play every player you have on the field of play in his favorite position and Tomias who came on and really played some 10 15 minutes in that game and that was one of the things that we learned that Arsenal fans are really gonna be hailant about especially when the international break is gone sorry when we are going to the international break and the players are really gonna be returning with a bang and a vibe when a lot is really happening so that is the third scenario now let's get into some facts from statement dave fourth the fourth thing we learned from this game is all about bokayo saka and i'm really gonna be reading this i don't have a lot to explain because statement dave has gone ahead obviously make my explanations to you guys and saka is suckering and saka is cooking now he first told us that Against Southampton, Saka completed the most final third passes, created the most chances, which were seven, took the most shots, seven, assisted twice, assisted two goals, and scored. That's what he said. And all this was really very evident when you really know what it is all about. So, he, ordered, he added that he has been directly involved in 10 goals in the Premier League this season. No player has managed more. And he's saying world class that is statman dave and i told you saka this season for me i haven't gone ahead obviously give him that world class you know to attach it to his name but if he's consistent for this season i tell you i'm gonna come out and tell you that saka is top class you know is world class you get then <clears throat> he added that in the 10 years bukayo saka in the 10 years, Bukayo Saka is the only player in the Premier League to have created seven chances and taken seven plus shots in a single Premier League game on two separate occasions. He has done it back to back, seven shots and eight chances created versus Leicester City. You remember that very well, that game ended for two. Seven shots and seven chances created versus Southampton. Elite output from the Arsenal captain, that is Saka. You know, when Odegaard is away. Saka has gone ahead obviously come up and obviously acted as the captain for the club of Arsenal. So all those are things that we're going to have to learn from this beautiful game of football that was played between Arsenal and Southampton. Then Statman Dave went ahead obviously give us another start that really shows you that Saka is on his high. He said, Bukayo Saka becomes the fifth winger in the Premier League history to have scored all assisted 90 plus goals in the Premier League at 23. Ronaldo had gone ahead to obviously score and create 118 goals. Raheem Sterling second. He had gone ahead to score 100. He has gone ahead to obviously score and create 110 goals. Ryan Giggs had gone ahead to score and create 92. Marcus Rashford and Bukayo Saka 91. And Marcus Rashford is out of this bracket. And Saka is really still 23. And he's really going to continue to score. And by the end of this season, Saka might have gone ahead, obviously, um, break the record of Ronaldo. He might take that spot because he's how many goals and assists away from really clinching that in the Premier League. Nine, that is 118. 27. And as I told you, I believe that Saka is really going to score 20 goals in the Premier League and score and create, and create 20 goals, according to how he's really doing his thing now. He's having seven, meaning that he's left with 13 and he's left with 18 goals. Meaning that when you add 31 onto 91, he's really going to be the first, he's going to be the best to obviously create more chances, all 90 plus goals and assists, you know, at 23. That is Bokayo Saka for you and he's really suckering and he's really doing the needful. So that is the fourth lesson that we've learned. And there have been close to three, four things that we had to obviously talk about, courtesy of Statement Dave. Now, let's go to Kai Havertz, man in form, man very consistent, man doing the needful. And there is a milestone that he has gone ahead, obviously, reach. We've been told that 
Kai Havertz has now been directly involved in 20 goals in 20 Premier League games as a striker for Arsenal. He is averaging a goal or an assist every 82 minutes in the Premier League as a centre forward. Now, do you doubt the decision that was taken by the manager of Arsenal that he's not going to be getting in a centre forward? You know, and he trusted into Kai Havertz and now he has four goals in the league, but he has gonna hate to play he has gonna hate to play twenty Premier League games as a striker and he has been involved in twenty goals. If at all you really add when talk about involvement, it's all about goals and assists. That is this guy, that is the man known as Kai Havertz for you. And in reference for you <coughs> Kai Havertz this season has played six games, right? Kai Havertz has gone ahead to play seven games in the Premier League and he's having four goals and one assist. You understand? Then last season, he scored 13 and 7, but obviously some of those came in through when he's still playing in the midfield, but him playing as a striker of Arsenal now has gone ahead to find himself get to those levels so guys i call upon for your reactions into the comment section below that's what i had for you in here onto the rokani media football continue to subscribe to this channel to see it that everything really moves on as planned and those are the five things that i went ahead to learn from the game of arsenal 3 southampton 1 you can as well feel free to go into the comment section and tell us your thoughts if there is anything that you learned that i haven't gone ahead to hint on because most of the things that I haven't talked about we are discussed in the player ratings and the match reaction and now i come back with the five things that we learned from arsenal 3 southampton 1. rock and david is my name we sign out for now see you later and i'm gonna be returning in the next two three hours to obviously bring you the latest news and information in here remember we are powered by mono gadgets dealers in brand new phones and brand new laptops and if you know you know they really give you the best treat that you want and go ahead to obviously call plus two five six seventy double nine double eight double six five and they'll give you the best that you deserve as a person who really follows up in here all the time so rock and david is my name you people are my mates and i love you to the fullest we sign out and bye bye you know Games are really coming in through thick and fast. Manchester United is obviously playing at Aston Villa. You know that very well. In a game that is really going to be heated up, right? Man United needs to win this game of football. It's coming in through at 16 hours. How many hours from now? Four hours from now, United is really going to be playing against Aston Villa. And Eric Ten Hag has a lot of pressure accumulating onto his side. Chelsea is another team that's going to be hosting Nottingham Forest at the bridge and Brighton is going to be closing the match day seven with what we call with taking on or hosting Brighton sorry Brighton is going to be hosting Spurs and that's why things are really going to be panning out that side bye bye my man.